Evaluating expressions. Evaluating expressions doesn't mean looking at an expression and saying, wow, that expression sucks. Uh, it's actually basically the easiest thing you'll do in algebra. It's really just basic arithmetic. This problem says evaluate x plus 3 for x equals 4 and x equals 6. So this is basically two problems in one. We're going to handle both the same way. This is our expression, x plus 3. What it's asking us to do is evaluate it for x equals 4, and we're going to do that first, then we'll evaluate it for x equals 6. Now when it says evaluate, all that means is we take the value it tells, tells us we should use for x and replace the x with that value. So x equals 4. Everywhere I see an x, I just put a 4. There's nothing else to do but add the 3. So when we evaluate x plus 3 for x equals 4, we get 7. Now, when it says evaluate x plus 3 for x equals 6, we're doing the exact same thing. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with a 6. 6 plus 3 equals 9. Notice we're not solving the equation or using any of the steps of algebra to solve the equation. It's really just a fill-in-the-blank problem. Everywhere there's an x, put the number they tell you to put. Boom, you're done. Our last problem we did was to evaluate the expression x plus 3. Now this is actually called a linear, a linear expression. You'll learn more about that in future lessons, but for now let's just say it means that there's no exponent like what you see up here. Um, there's only one variable. Okay, so when we get to graphing and working on the coordinate plane, we'll see that equations that are linear equations, when you graph them, they make straight lines. But now what we're going to do is evaluate a nonlinear expression, and it's really not much harder. In fact, if you're uh, good with a calculator, this will work out very quickly. We're going to evaluate the expression x squared plus 3x plus 2 for x equals 4. Oh my gosh, it's disappeared. And now it's back. That's exciting. Uh, we're going to evaluate the expression x squared plus 3x plus 2 for x equals 4. It's the exact same thing we were doing before. Everywhere there's an x, and in this case it shows up more than once. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to replace it with a 4. Okay, here we go. That's not a pen. That's a dot. Here's a pen. 4 squared plus 3 times... 4 plus 2. Then it's just math. 4 squared is 16. 3 times 4 is 12. The 2 is just sitting there like it was all along. 16 plus 12 is 28. Plus 2 is 30. This looks like something really hard. Not that hard at all, is it? There's a slightly scarier looking expression for us to evaluate. Notice it's got two variables in it. It has x and y, uh, but nothing's changed. Everywhere there's an x, we're going to pop in a 2. Everywhere there's a y, we're going to pop in a 3. Then we're going to let the calculator do the math for us. So, 4 times x is 2. So I'm going to replace that x with a 2. It's squared plus 3 times 2 times 3 plus Two, oh, yikes, too far over. Two, and then y, once again, is three, and in this case, the three is squared. All right, let's work it out. Two squared is four, times four is 16. Three times two, that's another time sign, times three is 18. Remember your order of operations, we do our exponents first. Three squared is nine times 2 is 18. You add those together and you get 18 and 18 is 36 plus 16 52. So just to sum it up, evaluating expressions is a fairly easy process. It's just like a fancy fill in the blank. Just put the numbers in carefully for the letters that are supposed to stand for those numbers and you'll be fine. 
Okay, this looks like I'm trying to trip you up here because instead of just an expression, I have an equation. The problem asks for a solution. Expressions do not have a solution. They don't even have an equal sign. But there is an expression in here, x squared plus 2x minus 15, and this expression is supposed to equal 0. So all we have to do, at least until we learn how to solve quadratic equations, which is what this is, is try each of these answer choices out in the expression and see which one does in fact equal zero. This is a, a method of algebra. It's not really algebra, but it's a method of answering an algebra question you could only do on a multiple choice test. Now I'm going to start in the middle with, with answer choice C, and if this turns out to be too big, then I'm not going to try the bigger numbers, 7 and 15, and if it's too small, well, then I won't try the smaller numbers. 5 squared plus 2 times 5 minus 15. Does this equal 0? Spoiler alert! No, it does not. It equals 20. All right. Well, 20 was too big, so uh, first of all, let's mark off the answer choice C which is 5, because that was too big. Well, if 5 is too big, 7 and 15 are definitely going to be too big. It's not always possible to tell if the equation's a little bit complicated, but in this case, we can tell. We've got to get a smaller number. Let's try 3. 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 15. Well, 3 squared is 9 plus 2 times 3. That's 6. 9 plus 6 is 15 minus 15 equals 0. That's what it's supposed to equal. So basically, evaluating expressions, take the number they've asked you to put in for the variable and pop it in just like a fill in the blank. And sometimes you can use this same technique when it's an algebra equation they're asking you to solve. The answer choices are numbers. You can just try out the numbers and see which one works. No extra charge for that tip.